Okay, so we're just going to do a take a quick look here at uh, connecting the the graphs of functions and derivatives. Now that we've we've talked about the first derivative test and we've used the tables and, and we have maybe a little more insight into how we can determine where peaks and valleys are, you know, relative extrema. Uh, it gives us a little increases our ability, improves our ability to, to make connections between the graphs of functions and their derivatives. So here's where we left off yesterday, right? Let's just review this real quick. So they're showing us a graph of the derivative of some continuous function, right? That's important. It's continuous, so I can graph it without picking my pen off the board. Uh, that pass, oh, I, I didn't see the part where it passes through the origin. So let's do this again. I kind of messed this up then in that case. Let me go back a few steps here if I can. No, I can't. I just got to start over. Okay, if it goes through the origin, then somebody articulate for me here. Why is it where, I want to know where there is a, where there is an extremum, what kind of extremum it is, and explain to me how you know that. Okay, so where is there an extremum? What type of extremum is it? And how do you know? What do you think? Amber, can you help us out? Can you tell me where there's an extremum on this one? A, a maximum or a minimum? Yeah, can you just tell me the location of an extremum and tell me what kind it is and, and how you know that? There's a maximum when x equals negative 2. Okay, and, and why is that? Um, because the slope is positive on the left and negative on the right. There you go, good. Okay, so, so it's going from a positive increasing function to a decreasing negative function, right? So we've got this we've got this, this transition, right? Here's, here's a place where we've got a zero. That's where our derivative function has a zero, right? To the left of that, it's positive. To the right of that, it's negative, okay? And so we can see then that we know we've got a maximum at x equals zero. It tells us, I didn't read the question very carefully. It tells us we're supposed to, to sketch a graph of a function that passes through the origin, so I guess it would have to do something like, like this, right? There's going to be our maximum is at zero. And so it would just have to do something like that, right? Now we'll, we'll finish it here. What else do we know about this then? Where is there another extremum? Daisy, where's there another extremum here? At negative three, you mean? Three, I mean? Yeah, yeah, good. Okay, what kind of extremum is that going to be? Um, I don't know, just going to guess um, minimum. You guessed right. Can somebody defend that answer? Why is it a minimum there? What do you think, Sydney? Why is it a minimum at negative three? Why do we have a minimum there? The I'm not sure. Okay. Kirsten? I don't know either. Okay. David? Look at the behavior of that derivative function. Why do we have a minimum at x equals negative 3? Um, is it because of Like the way, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Caleb? Because it goes from a positive to a negative. Say that, a positive to a negative? Yeah. I think you're, you're thinking the right, you're thinking the right thing, but you said it, you said it backwards, right? Because look, look at the, so if we've got this derivative function, and let's go ahead and, and, def, and remind ourselves here. This is a graph of, right, this red or pink, whatever you want to call that. This is a graph of f prime, 
right? We're up here, we're graphing f. The derivative function, here's the graph of the derivative function. It has negative values to the left of this boundary. It has its positive value. See these, look at the value of the derivative. The outputs of the derivative function are positive in between the boundaries, and it's negative over here, right? So what do we know from our first derivative test? If we're transitioning from a place where the derivative is negative to a place where it's positive, what happens there? What, David, what, what, what happens if we're transitioning from negative, and think negative derivative means a decreasing function, right? Positive derivative means an increasing function. So, so what does this have to be here then? When, if, if we're at a point where we're transitioning from a negative to a positive first derivative, what has to be happening at x equals negative three? There's a minimum. It's got to be a minimum, doesn't it? It's got to be a minimum. Okay, and we even know. We even know that that we can tell you what kind of a, of extrema are these, right? Because we have zero values, right? These are zeros of the first derivative. That means we've got to have horizontal tangents there too, right? So these are smooth, rounded. Uh, peaks and valleys, not the jagged kind, right? Okay, everybody give me a one to five on that. Is that making sense? Okay, let's do some more of these, okay? So here's, here's a graph of the derivative of a continuous function that passes through the origin. We wanna sketch a graph of, a possible graph of the function on the same set of axes. Okay. So tell me, I want to know something about this. Tell me something that you, you know for sure is happening with our function. Uh, something interesting about it. Andy, tell me something interesting about our function. Um, it has a zero slope on negative two and one. Okay, so it has horizontal tangents at negative two and one. Okay, what's what's happening at one? Uh, at one, the to the left side of it, the derivative is negative. So on like the actual function, it would be going down, and then on the right side, it's positive. So it would be a extrema there. What kind? Um, Minimum? Yeah, that'd be a minimum because it's going from, from decreasing to increasing, right? And so once again, it's probably a good thing to do. Let's go ahead and just and divide up uh, the signs of the derivative. Let's, let's divide this graph into regions. So to the right of this point right here, the, the value of the derivative is positive. To the left, it's negative. And look, we've got one value here where it's another zero, but it's negative on both sides. Okay, so Eddie's correct. This has to be a minimum, right? And if we're going through the origin, then it must do something like that, right? And so we've got a, a minimum. We have a, a, a place here where we have a horizontal tangent and we have a minimum. Okay, what's happening at negative two? Madeline, what, what's happening at negative two? We know we have a horizontal tangent there. Well, your mic's not working, is it? You already told me that. Uh, I'm gonna skip you then. Kyle, what's happening at negative two? It's negative on both sides, right? Yeah. And so, that means it's like some sort of inflection. It, yeah, it's an inflection point. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. So it's going to, we're going to get a horizontal tangent, but it's decreasing on both sides. And so it, it's not a maximum or a minimum, is it? It's just an inflection point. Okay. What's happening down here at, at this minimum of the derivative? Anything exciting happening there? Does that tell us, what's that tell us? 
Nothing earth-shattering, but it does tell us something. What's happening when x is equal to 0? How does that relate to the curve at x equals 0, the fact that we have a relative minimum of our derivative function? Johan, what's that tell us? Anything? Um, I'm not entirely sure. It's nothing, out in, it's nothing major. Anybody just pitch in somebody if you think you got an answer there. It tells us something. I mean, we, we can take some little grain of information from that. Okay, so it's, uh, it's, it's not that the, the, the slope starts to transit. Okay, not exactly. We're gonna, I'm going to just introduce this topic today. It's where the rate of change of the slope changes, right? And, but that's not really what I'm getting at. That's, that's something we'll talk more about today. The, the rate of change of the slope changes from being negative to positive. So what that the rate of change of the slope is really the second derivative, right? But but I don't want to bog us down with that for for now because we haven't even really thought about what that means in terms of a graph yet. What does it tell us about just the just the slope itself? Is it saying that like that's where the most drastic decrease in the slope is? Yeah, that's just the steepest part of the function, right? On that locally speaking, on that interval between these critical numbers at negative 2 and positive 1, that's just the place where the slope has the biggest negative value, so it's the steepest. Everybody get that? Can we make that connection? Okay. All right, good. Okay. Questions? Ask some questions. If you're not, this is where it really would help. If you're not getting something, try to ask a question about this. Can anybody come up with a question here? A double dog dare you. Can you come up with a question? See if you can come up with a question that someone else might have. Form a question for somebody else, even if you think you got the answer. No dice? Okay, well, we'll look at another one. How about this? So here's a graph of f prime. Let's use this to estimate the intervals on which the function's increasing, decreasing, and also the x-coordinates of all local extreme values, so extrema, okay? So everybody, just try this on your own real quick. Just take a second, everybody think about this problem. So we want to know the intervals where the function's increasing. So you're going to fill in the blanks here. We'll use interval notation. So where's it increasing and decreasing, first of all? And then where do we have relative maxima and where do we have relative minima? Those are the questions we're answering. Okay, Andrew, where's it increasing? What are the intervals where our function is increasing? Um, one to, what 
Okay, so there is one interval. Now, do I am I including one and three? Oh, hold it. You said one and three? Oh, okay. You're looking right here from like one to two and a half? Yeah. Okay. Two to three, then, right? Okay, two to three. Uh, open interval or closed interval? Am I including two and three? Uh, yes. Okay, so the suggestion is one interval where it's increasing is here. Let's throw that out to the group. Anybody dispute that or want to amend that a little bit? Yeah, that's right. Okay, we, we don't include two or three, right? Because it's only increasing between the extrema, right? Two and three would be would be points of transition of the slope. Okay, so we do need to we do need to make these rounded parentheses, right? Because we're not including those points. Okay, there's what's one interval. Good job. Is there are there any other intervals? Anybody see any other intervals? Zero. Say it again. Zero. Yeah, good. Everything less than less than zero, right? So we could do there we go. Okay, so that's where it's increasing. Okay, where is it uh, where is it decreasing? Sydney, where is it decreasing? And, and we see that, right? What Andrew was doing, he just realized that there's a zero of the first derivative. There's a zero of the first derivative. And there's a zero of the first derivative. Right? And he saw that we had positive first derivatives to the left of that zero, and we had positives between those. Okay, so, Sydney, any places where the function is decreasing? Any intervals where it's decreasing? So, wouldn't it just be everything else? Like yeah, okay, so what is that? Uh, zero to two. Okay. Um, Whoops. Yep, and... Three to negative infinity. Three to well, okay, no, three to. We're talking about we're talking about x, right? I know that's that's going down, but but that doesn't oh, the. Cross? No, it's going to posit, positive infinity, right? Because we're oops, oh darn it, what did I just do? There we go. Uh, positive infinity because we're talking about the intervals of x where the function is increasing or decreasing, right? So every place, in other words, everything over here, these are x values where the, fun the derivative function is negative valued and in between 0 and 2, that's a region, that's an interval where the derivative is negative valued. Okay, so having said all that stuff then, Emma, Identify for me the relative maxima. Where would they occur? Would there be one at two and a half? Uh, at two and a half, right, right here, you mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, but but look, this is a graph of the derivative function. We want to know where is there a where are the maxima of the function f? Okay, but now, so now, what are the conditions? If we have a, can you tell me any places where we have zeros of the derivative which correspond to horizontal tangents? Um, at the curve. Mm, now, 
see the, the function that's graphed there, see, let, let me, this, this function that's graphed there, th this is the easy thing that's easy to get confused about this. This is not the function f. This is the function f prime that we have graphed. This is a graph of the derivative, and we're trying to figure out where does the function whose derivative is graphed, where does f have extrema? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. It'd be, so right, it's going to be at the places where the function, the critical numbers would be the places where the derivative is equal to zero, right? So what are the x values where the derivative function is equal to zero? Uh, zero two, three. There you go, zero, two, and three, right? So we know we're going to have horizontal tangents at zero, two, and three, right? Okay, so let's just take this one at zero, for example. We know we've got a horizontal tangent there. Is it going to be a maximum or a minimum, and why? What would be the conditions? Think about the first derivative test. A maximum is a point of transition from what sign of derivative to what sign of derivative, right? If I'm drawing, if, if this is my function and I'm drawing a maximum, you know, a maximum is doing that, right? And so what's the sign of the derivative to the left of our horizontal tangent? Here's my function. This is the actual function f now. This isn't the derivative. That's the actual function f. So the ant's walking uphill over here. What's the sign of the derivative? Anybody? On the left and the yeah, good. It's got to be positive, which corresponds to increasing on the left, and it's negative, right? This, these are f primes, right? Decreasing on the right, and so that gives me a maximum. So if this is my, my derivative function is what is graphed here, this zero of the derivative is a point where I'm transitioning from what sign to what sign of the derivative? Everybody see that? Right? Because values to the left of that point are derivative function, right? And this is, you know, again, don't, it's so easy to get, to get let yourself get confused on this because you're thinking your people tend to think in terms of f instead of f prime right but this is f prime that we're graphing to the left of this point my derivative has positive values the derivative function right now, let's just take a second and think about this for just a moment like if i if i go to x equals negative one let's just say hypothetically that up here on this curve Let's just say hypothetically that this curve goes through a point up here that has coordinates negative 1, positive 20. What is that positive 20 telling us? When x equals negative 1, if that, those are the coordinates of a point on the derivative function, what is that positive 20 telling us? Emma? I'm picking on you. <laughs> In other words, what that's saying, if this is the ordered pair, right, if this is the ordered pair on my derivative function, if the ordered pair is 1, negative 20, isn't that the same thing as saying f prime of 1 equals what? Positive 20. Po uh, supposed to be positive 20, sorry, yeah equals uh, pot, right? Yeah. So if the derivative function at x equals 1 has a value of 20, what's that telling us about the graph of, of the function f? What does the derivative correspond to in terms of a graph? Uh, slope. There you go, slope, right? Yeah, yeah, so that's just telling us that the slope is very steep. It's positive 20 there, right? Okay, and so if we look at this graph up here, the, the slope is very steep and positive there. As x increases towards zero, the slope is still positive, right? But it's getting less and less positive. So it's getting less steep. 
And then at x equals zero, it actually passes through a point where the slope is zero. So we get a horizontal tangent. And then to the right of that, look what happens. To the right of that, the values of the derivative get more negative. So it means it's getting steeper and steeper downhill, right? Steeper and steeper decreasing function. So then would everybody agree that that has to be a relative maximum there, right? We have to have a relative maximum at x equals zero, right? Because that's where we're going from positive to negative values of the derivative, right? From increasing to decreasing intervals, right? Are there any other relative maxima here on this thing? Any other relative maxima? Uh, let's see. Johan. Look at that, study that derivative function. Are there any other places where we have the conditions for a relative maximum? Emma, you got an idea? You're saying something. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> there's, An there's Andrew's cat again. <laughs> what do you think, Johan? Okay, well, well why, why do you say two? The slope is equal to zero at two, right? So that's a horizontal tangent line. What's the slope? Let's pick a value less than two. Like, let's pick one. What's the slope at one? Just estimate. When x equals, what's the slope at? Of the derivative or the? Well, I asked for the slope. So I want to know what, what is the slope of the function approximately at x equals 1? Uh, positive or negative? Uh, well, th th what is this black function graphing here? Uh, the oh, that's the derivative, right? Okay. So if I want the value of the derivative, that's just going to be the y-coordinate of that graph, right? Uh, See what I'm saying? Kind of. Not really. So, so when, I, when I graph, if I'm graphing a derivative function, let, let's, let's backtrack just a little bit here, right? If I'm graphing, okay, so if I'm graphing a regular function, here's my xy plane, right? If I'm graphing f of x, if I pick a point up here, and this is a coordinate on my graph of f of x, then the, if, if the x coordinate is 8 and the y coordinate happens to be 5, then what's that telling me? That's telling me that f of 8 equals 5, right? That's the output of the function. That's what y is always equal to in this case. We just graphed y equals f of x, right? Okay, let's say we graph some different function, only this time we're graphing a derivative function. Okay, so there's some other function, but this one is f prime. Okay, it doesn't have to be the same f, how about? Forget the first one. This is just f prime of x. Okay, so we've got the red function is y equals f prime of x. The y coordinate on our xy plane this time is equal to the value of the derivative function, right? So here we're going to take a point on our derivative function that has coordinates 8, 2. Okay, so what is that telling me? If I have a point on my derivative function that has coordinates 8, 2, then what's that telling me? F prime of what equals what? Johan. Yeah, F prime of 8 equals 2, right? So if we input a value of 8 into the derivative function, the output value, the y value, is 2. Okay? Does that make sense? Right? So keep that in mind. And, and we, it's been a long time since we've talked about this. But 
the graph of a derivative function is the values of that derivative function correspond to the slopes of the original function, right? Remember, we did a bunch of stuff like, let's just, let's warm up with one of these. It's been a while since we did these. But what, what if we, let's graph some derivatives and functions on the same set of axes. Okay, so if this is, for example, my function, There's f, let's graph f prime. Okay, where does my graph, my f prime graph, start off at when x equals zero? What's the value of the derivative at x equals zero, Kirsten? Uh, it's it zero? It's zero, yeah, good, so we're starting here, aren't we? Okay, and it looks like the value of my derivative is getting positive or negative when I move to the right. Look at these. Negative. It's getting more and more negative, isn't it, right? So it looks like it's doing something maybe like this where it's getting more and more negative until it gets to here. And then that's what happens there. That's a weird one. What's somebody, what happens there? Ember, what's happening there? So we're graphing f prime. What happens when I get out to this value right here? My derivative is transitioning from a big negative value to what? It, okay, but, but what is, see like right here, the slope, it, the ant's walking steeply downhill, right? And so we have a large negative derivative, right? The slope is large and negative. What happens when I transition through that sharp corner? What happens over here then? What's that slope? Um, zero. Yeah, it's it's positive. yeah, good. It's zero. Good. And so if that's zero, then think what that means. That means that we have to have there's a sharp corner, so the derivative doesn't exist, right? Remember talking about this? So if the derivative doesn't exist there, then I'm going to have to have an open endpoint and another open endpoint, and now it's just going to do something like that, isn't it? Right? Everybody agree? And it's going, it's going to increase and increase and increase and increase until we get to there. So something like you know, I mean, what does this look like? Well, I mean, it probably, you know, it probably looks something like that. It gets to some maximum value, and then it's still positive, but out here at the very end, what does it end up being? At this point right here, would everybody agree? That's another horizontal tangent, or it's supposed to be, right? So it's back to zero, and so the derivative's probably doing something like that, right? Remember doing that stuff? where we're trying to, given the graph of a function, we're trying to graph the corresponding derivative. Okay, I think that's a little bit easier to do. Now on these other questions that are popping up, stuff like this, they're asking us to do the opposite, right? They're giving us the derivative function and they're telling us to work backwards and try to graph the original function. And that's what I think is, it's kind of a brain twister to do that, right? So think about, and I'm gonna go back, I, I'm gonna go back to our previous, really all, all we'll probably do today, and this is fine, is we'll probably just maybe focus on the concepts here of, of these graphs, you know, that's, if we just, that's a good discussion for the day. I think you guys probably, if I'm guessing, you got tests to work on and probably homework, you might need a little break on adding new material, I'm, I'm supposing, right? Would I be correct in assuming that? Okay, so let's look at our definition. Oh, hang on. I got to go back one more day, I think. Whoops. Let's go back. There we go. First derivative. Yeah, right there. All 
Oh, that's not it. <laughs> Right there, okay? Right, definitions of increasing and decreasing functions. Let's just review this real quick. I know you guys know this, but we gotta just connect these dots a little more strongly. A function f is increasing on an interval if the derivative is positive, right? So whenever, if f prime is greater than zero for all x in some interval, what's that mean? That means the derivative function is positive valued, so the graph of the derivative would be above the x-axis on that interval, right? Then that would be a place where it's increasing, okay? If the graph of the derivative function is below the x-axis, meaning the derivative function is negative valued, then it's decreasing on that interval right? And if the derivative is equal to zero, that's where we'd have a horizontal tangent. That's where the function would have to be constant, right? So it's got its horizontal valued at that point, okay? And that leads us to the first derivative test, right? We know that if we're changing from a region where the first derivative is negative, so the function is decreasing, to a region where the first derivative is positive, and we're going through a zero there, right? Then that makes it smooth. But even if it weren't going through a zero, if it were a sharp corner, it still would be a minimum, wouldn't it? We're going from decreasing to increasing, negative slopes to positive slopes. The, the, the facts you have to connect in your brain with the graph is that any place where this function, this is a graph of the function f, not the derivative. This is a graph of f. Any place where that function is decreasing, going downhill, the derivative is negative. Where it's increasing, it's going uphill, right? Conversely, if we go from a place where the derivative is positive, so the function is increasing, to a place where the derivative is negative, decreasing, then that gives us a maximum, right? That gives us a peak, okay? So we're trying to just connect that to this graph. Okay, this is a graph. I tell you what might be helpful. What might be helpful is let's maybe just try to do without, inter without identifying all these regions where it's increasing and decreasing. Let's just take this graph of the derivative function and try to just sketch on top of that a derivative of the function f. How about? Okay. So what's going on over here? If the derivative is negative valued, I want to know what's going on over here. Natalie? Is Natalie there? I don't see Natalie. Uh, let's see. What's going on over there, Kyle? What's happening on this region of our, de of our derivative function up here? I can't understand what you're saying at all, really. Is it garbled? It's naturally yeah, really choppy. Can you guys, is it choppy for everybody? No, just Kyle? Okay, I'm skipping you, Kyle. <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's something on your end. What's happening there? Seth? That green part of the derivative function. What's that going to look like if I want to graph the function? I want to graph... F. No, Seth. Caleb. Oh, go ahead, Seth. I want to know. I want to know what's. I, I want to just graph. We've got this derivative function graphed here. I want to graph the function. Right. Okay. Why is, but, but how come there's a maximum here? Because it's going from uh, positive, positive. Yeah, it's going from positive to negative, so it's going to be coming up. There you go. And then it's going to peak and then go down. Yeah, look at this. We've got, look at the values of the derivative here, like at negative one half. We get these, we get these really big positive values of the derivative function. So that means we've got a really large positive slope right? So this point right here, this just means we're going down here someplace, we're going to have this really steep positive slope. 
because the value of the derivative there is large and positive. As x moves closer to zero, so the ant walking along this thing, what is his built-in slope sensor telling him? His slope sensor is telling him that his large positive slopes are getting less positive, so this thing is kind of leveling out, isn't it? And it gets to, it gets to x equals zero, and that's where the slope is equal to zero. So he's walking along this function. The slope is very steep, but it's getting less steep, less steep, less steep. Now we hit a peak, right? See what I'm saying? And maybe I made that a little, it's kind of hard. To, maybe I made that a little too extreme. Hard to, hard to draw there. Maybe more like this. Like it's, it's very steep. It's getting less steep. It's getting less steep. It's getting less steep. And now it's at zero. Okay, now what's happening? If we continue on down here, the derivative function is at zero, but it's getting negative, more negative, more negative, more negative, more negative. Now that's as big a negative value as it has, right? That's where the derivative function has its bigative, biggest negative value. So in that region, this function is getting negative, negative, negative. The most negative is right there. It's not supposed to be vertical. That's just my bad drawing. Now it's getting less negative, less negative, less negative, less negative, up to zero right there. Okay, so what's that doing for my, my function? My function's getting more negative, now less negative, less negative, less negative. Now it's back to zero, right? There's a place where I've got a horizontal tangent just like I had there. Okay, now what? Now the function is getting... It's a little bit positive, a little bit positive, a little bit positive. The most positive it gets on this interval is right there. So this thing's going to turn around, and the slope, our function's getting positive slope, positive slope, the most positive. And now it's going to start getting more negative and go back to zero right there. And now what happens? From that point on, I need a new color here. What's my new color going to be? Oh, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be go back to green. How about now it's the derivative function is getting more and more and more and more negative. So from that point forward, this thing is just going to turn and continually get more and more decreasing. So steeper and steeper negative slopes. Everybody see that? Right? Okay, so we could identify then, like if we want to kind of reverse engineer this thing, here are regions where our derivative function, and that's what we're graphing, right? This is the derivative function here, not the blue one, the one that's multicolored. This is our graph of the derivative function, and we can see that it is clearly negative valued, or po sorry, positive valued, every place over there, right? The derivative is positive over here, right? That derivative function is above the x-axis. Okay, it dips down and it's negative valued in this little band in here, right? It goes, it's negative right here. Then it veers up and is positive again for just a little bit. I got this one little region right there where it's positive again. My derivative function is positive. And then over here, the derivative function dips below the x-axis and so it's negative again every place. So transitions from positive to negative, that has to correspond by the first derivative test to a maximum. Transitions of negative derivative to positive has to correspond to a, a minimum right there, right? And positive to negative corresponds to a maximum again. Okay? Everybody see that? Okay, let's try another one. So there's f prime. 
Okay, we want to find the locations of all extrema on this thing. So what's graphed is the derivative function. This is not the function itself. This is the derivative. Right, graphed below is f prime. I know what's going to be a great idea. Oh, God, it's terrible. Okay, so if I make a table here, what if I, what if I make my tables? We can fill in the values of our tables from this picture. Okay, where's a value? I need an x value where the derivative is equal to zero. The derivative is the function that's graphed. Kirsten, where's the place? Give me a zero of the derivative function. Negative one. Negative one. There you go. Okay, so negative one. We've got at x equals negative one, we have a zero of our first derivative. And remember, we know what that means. That means we've got a horizontal tangent. Okay. Uh, give me another zero of the first derivative. Ember? Need another zero of the first derivative. Emma. Negative three and negative five. Okay, negative and, and, and negative seven. So negative three, negative five, and negative seven. Those are all zeros of my first derivative, so I know those are all horizontal tangents. Okay, I need a region. Let's use the first derivative test. We don't really need a test point here, but we could do one if we wanted to. So let's just pick a test point at x equals negative 8. What's the sign of the derivative at x equals negative 8 based on my graph? What's the sign of my derivative at negative 8 based on the graph? Let's do one of these really quick. Daisy, I know you got to get out of here, but we're going to do one of these. At negative eight, my derivative is positive or negative? This is a graph. It's positive. Yeah, there's a graph of the derivative, so we know it's positive. How about at negative six? It's negative. It's negative, right? It's negative. And so what do we know then? If we're going from positive to negative, we're going from increasing to decreasing. And so that's a maximum, right? I bet you that helps connecting it to the table. That help? Doing it that way? Okay, good. All right, we got to go. Um, to keep working on this stuff, I, I, I wasn't going to give you an assignment today anyway, so this is fine. Uh, we'll get back to this next time, and maybe we'll do just a couple more examples of this, and then we'll talk about what the second derivative looks like. Okay? Have a great weekend. I'm here after school if you need me. Ta-ta.